This is one of the most deadliest pigments known to man. And I'm going to make paint out of it. Today, I'm going to tell you about Paris Green, also known as PG21. As a color itself, as we know it now, it's not that special. You can easily mix this with a common green pigment and a white, although it might lack a final granulating effect that Paris Green has. It's the history of this pigment that makes it so interesting. Before the 1800s, there weren't that many bright green pigments to work with. You could mix a green with a yellow and a blue, but when it came to single pigments, you had verdigris, malachite and sap green, which all weren't very bright or vivid. Shields green was invented as a solution for this. A copper arsenite pigment that was very toxic due to the combination of copper and arsenic in it. But it gave a very bright green pigment. Unfortunately, it wasn't that stable. So Paris green, but also known under a lot of other names, like Schweinfurter Grün, Veronese Green, Emerald Green, and obviously Paris Green. This pigment was developed in 1808 as an improved version of Shields Green. It was more durable, since this is a copper arsenite, but the arsenic in it, in combination with the copper, still made it very toxic. Due to the arsenic in it, there's also a downside. It reacts with sulfur, meaning a later developed ultramarine blue or cadmium yellow, which had sulfur in it, would make the green brown and lose its color. But that wasn't the only downside. It was used for paint, dyes, for wallpapers, toys, everything that was a bright green was made with this pigment. But the fumes that it gave off were actually very toxic. And people didn't think about this until a lot of children died in their sleep because of the beautiful green wallpaper that they had. It was prohibited in 1815 because of this, because of the toxicity. People wouldn't wear it anymore in dresses. People wouldn't dress their rooms with wallpaper. But even that it was known to be very toxic and even used as a detergent for crops and rat poison. With the knowledge of all of this, the pigment was still in production and used as a paint until the 1960s. It gave us such a beautiful, rich, turquoise, bluish color that just had a certain appeal to it. To hide the nature of this deadly pigment, there were many names given to it. We know it as Paris Green, but Veronese Green and Schweinfurter Grün were also names that were very common for it. But as much as 80 names were used for this paint in many different places. Luckily, there are very, very good modern alternatives that aren't toxic or deadly at all. So this color still remains a beautiful and kind of macabre piece of history when it comes to pigments. It is also the reason why when we think about toxic, things are illustrated green. The movies, you know, the cartoons where a bottle or a witch is brewing uh, is something toxic. It is green, it has green vapors, almost radioactive green in a bottle, over an apple, things like that all comes from this pigment. One more thing about the pigment. It is very often called emerald green in books or on the internet. And it is not the same as the French name Vert Emerald. 
although it has the same translation that pigment stands for hydrated chromium oxide also known as iridium so emerald green or this paris green aren't the same thing a note this is not a pigment that I sell. It is not a paint that I sell. I do sell a malachite, which is a copper-based pigment. It is also not one of the healthiest pigments, but just for the sake of a pigment collection and showing you what this looks like as a pigment being made into pain I think this is very valuable to have the washes of the pigment can almost be a light tur turquoise more bluish green while in its mass tone it does the name emerald green justice this swatch shows you a version of Paris green that I have but in the meantime I have collected more samples and even acquired Shields green to compare it with that will be done in a later video I hope you enjoyed this little brief piece of history and this beautiful breakthrough green that has been banned for over 200 years if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel and hopefully see you next time. This pigment has been banned for over a hundred years. This is a bull of genuine Indian yellow. The story behind it goes that it was obtained by feeding cows only with mango leaves. This caused the cows to be sick and malnutrition so it was banned and seen as animal cruelty but before that it was used as a pigment by famous artists all over the world this is an unpurified version so it has some well rubble dust maybe hay any kind of debris in it um, and it smells really bad Luckily enough, I got a sample from Cornelissen and Sons and they sent me a shard of Indian yellow from their collection to compare it with another microscope. Fortunately, I'm working with the real deal. So this is a mustard-like yellow which becomes more fibrate on the slab when you spread it out or dilute it. There's even the shards and even that little piece I put under the microscope, I made powder of it, diluted it with alcohol, was so much brighter than this. But as you can see, when I dilute it with water and swatch it, this is the Indian yellow all the manufacturers make a hue of. A bright and vivid yellow that just lets you think of the sun, summer, happiness. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, these are some Indian yellow hues compared to the original thing. Things from the past, things from the present, uh, things that are no longer used as a watercolor anymore, but I'm going to compare the raw, dry pigments and the swatches of all Indian yellow hues that I have. If you have any favorites out there from different brands, please let it know in the comments down below which are your Indian yellow hues, which are your, your go-tos. So I have nickel azure yellow, nickel dioxam yellow, and gamboge over here compared to NY20, the genuine Indian yellow. But which are the ones that you like? From which brand? So let me know down below in the comments. Hope to see you next video and see you soon. Did you know people used to paint with dead bodies? This 
is Mummy Brown. It's a bottle from 1857. This pigment was acquired from a private collector and it's seeing Binder for the first time in ages. Maybe for the first time ever. It is said to be a pigment made out of ground mummies. This version is a charred version of it, something that was quite common to do since you get a deeper hue and a finer pigment. There is also a raw version of Mummy Brown, which is even more rare and unfortunately I don't have. Working with this, as well as Indian Yellow and Paris Green, was an exciting thing to do. It's like the holy trinity of historic pigments, mysterious pigments, that is now complete and made into a paint. As a pigment itself, it's quite gritty at the start, but as you can see here, it breaks down quite easily. It wettens into a smooth and, as you can see later, a very fine paint. It smells a bit like an earth pigment or something with a hint of unburned coals. There's also a fragrance I can't quite put my fingers on, but it might make sense looking at the origin of the pigment. It could be something like incense or maybe a resin of some sorts that I'm not familiar with. I didn't really sniff the dry pigment. Um, I don't like the idea of dead people dust boogers up my nose, but I could smell it while I made the paint. A very macabre story around Mummy Brown is that they ran out of mummies. Um, so they weren't obtained legally always, or not, so, not at all. Um, so what else did they use as an alternative? Well, they used mummified animals, um, cats, birds, crocodiles, are known to have been mummified and you know, there's loads of uh, specimens, mummified specimens, around there in the museum. But the story goes that when they ran out of mummies, they actually dried out criminals that were sentenced to death in the desert to be naturally mummified and used those as a substitute for mummy powder. Since mummy wasn't always and only used as a pigment, but also as a form of medicine. Anyway, I don't want to think too much about that. As you can see here, it smooths out to be quite a lovely shade hue of brown. And it's quite smooth now. So I've been milling it for some while. And I don't want to, you know waste anything so I need to get everything off my slab of the miller so I'm left with just a tiny bit of genuine mummy brown. I noticed while mulling and scraping here as well you can't really see it on the camera that there's a fiber like substance in it as well that you can see while scraping it. Um, let's see if you can also see that or swatching it. So here it looks like almost a black paint. As a swatch something interesting happens. The hue goes from here like an almost raw umber mixed with black to a warmer burnt sienna when it dries. There is even some resemblance with castle earth, though a bit warmer and more dulled when dried, so it has a drying shift. I also made a swatch of unmilled pigment mixed in alcohol, so it evaporates and I'm just left with a very thin layer of pigment. And it shows an amazing array of browns going from yellowish to almost a deep red. It was really interesting, but that was something that I used for under the microscope, which unfortunately didn't give me a lot. Here, as you can see, I made one and a half dots of mummy brown. I hope you liked it. See you next time.